the adulation and the welcome of the crowd on Palm Sunday soon turned into shouts of accusation and condemnation. Our Lord Jesus Christ was arrested. He was tried unfairly and sentenced to death on the cross. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he was silent, like a lamb led to the slaughter, like a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. This morning, let us take that spiritual journey with our Lord to Calvary, and there tarry with him as he pour out his passion on the cross. You took the fall and 
thought of me above all. aside your majesty you gave up everything for me you suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again and now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. aside your majesty you gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you had created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted I want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart, and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. I really want to worship you, my Lord You have won my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you You are the only one who died for me You gave your life to set me free So I lift my voice to you Adoration Ooh, I lift my voice to you Yes, Lord Let us turn together to Isaiah chapter 53 Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid 
as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who would declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. All of us have encountered suffering before. Suffering is part of the human journey. Some sufferings are self-inflicted, we make a wrong decision and pain comes into our lives. Other kinds of suffering are inflicted by people. People hurt us. They say things or do things that cause us pain. And then there are those suffering that comes from the fallen environment we live in. For the world we live in is not perfect. There are sicknesses, plagues, death, injustice and evil. From these, we experience grief, uncertainty, anger, and suffering. Suffering brings us face to face with our limits as humanity, our lack as communities, our deficiencies as individuals. All of us have encountered suffering before. And let's admit it, we all do not like suffering. It was to this kind of world that God sent Christ. And nowhere in the Old Testament has the foretelling of the coming Messiah been so explicit but also rejected as in Isaiah 53. Explicit because Isaiah details to us verse by verse a defeated man, a wounded God, a lamb led to the slaughter, an afflicted being, a suffering son. Nowhere in all the Old Testament is it so plainly described and fully prophesied that Christ had to suffer. The idea of a suffering Savior is not easily understood nor accepted. It is because of this that the Jews in Isaiah's day could not comprehend this image prophesied to be the Messiah nor could the Pharisees and the Sadducees who saw the miracles of Jesus believe that this was their deliverer, Christ, the suffering son. This idea so rejected. To the Jews, Isaiah 53 doesn't make sense. To theologians, Countless debates have been made and papers written on why this chapter cannot be about the Messiah. To a world looking for answers, a vaccine, a solution, 
The idea of the suffering son, the agonizing savior, the crucified God just does not sit well. How could God look like this? As one Bible commenter puts it, the low condition Christ submitted to and his appearance in the world were not agreeable to the ideas the Jews had formed of the Messiah. It was expected that he should come in pomp. Instead of that, he grew up as a plant, silently and insensibly. He had nothing of the glory which one might have thought to meet with him. His whole life was not only humble as to outward condition, but also sorrowful, being made sin for us. He underwent the sentence sin had exposed us to. And you know what? Carnal hearts see nothing in the Lord Jesus to desire an interest in Him. Carnal hearts or worldly hearts see nothing in our Lord Jesus to desire an interest in Him. Unattractive, undesirable, unimpressive. But this is our God, the suffering Son. And if anything, Isaiah 53 shows us the heart of God, the ways of God, and undeniably God Himself. You see, the heart of God is one that cannot deny truth. Sin is sin. The fall is the fall. Infirmity has entered the human world. Death is death. The heart of God does not deny the mess that creation is in. It does not say heaven is on earth, nor does it promise humanity, hum immunity from pain. It does not assure us good government for all, or the absence of evil and lack, nor a firewall against viruses. The heart of God recognizes this truth. Creation is groaning. The seed of Adam wallows in sin. The world is fallen. But it's also the heart of God that shows us the ways of God. The incarnation, God with us, the Christ of Isaiah 53, demonstrates a God who is not aloof to human suffering. He is close to the sufferer. He is intimately understanding our limits. He sends his son not in majestic pomp, but like a root out of dry ground. Isaiah says he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. A despised God, rejected by man. A man of sorrow, familiar with suffering. He was looked down on and esteemed not. Oppressed and afflicted. Pierced for our transgressions. Cut off from the land of the living. For sin, stricken. Assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich, bearing the iniquity of many. God knows suffering. God is not aloof to suffering. God's own son suffered. The way God chose to show his heart was by sending the Lamb of God, the crucified Saviour, the suffering son, so that the truth of sin, sickness, and death could be confronted. The Jews wanted a deliverer king. The Romans were awaiting a notable opponent. The desires, the disciples rather desired an everyday master meeting their everyday needs. What about you and me? What kind of God do we want? A God who takes care of all our needs and wants. A God who cuddles us when we are unwell. A God who immunes us 
from diseases. A God who provides a vaccine for COVID-19 so that we can get on with life. A God of wealth, prosperity, and power. Isaiah 53 paints a different kind of God. Good Friday paints a different kind of God. The Bible paints a different kind of God. A God who knows suffering. A God not aloof to suffering. God's own son suffered. This is also what marks out who is in and undeniably God. At the cross, the full measure of God's suffering was on display. The father turned his face from his son and the son for the very first time suffered rejection from his father. The sin of the world was laid heavily on Christ at the cross. The payment for spiritual death was weighed fully on Christ at the cross. The price for our healing was inflicted totally on Christ at the cross. And when the father turned his face away, the suffering son in his dying breath cried, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabatani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The great hymn, Man of Sorrow, answers this question. Why has God forsaken his son? The song goes like this. Man of Sorrows, what a name. For the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Bearing shame and scoffing rude, in my place condemned he stood. Sealed my pardon with his blood. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Guilty vow and helpless we, Spotless Lamb of God was He. Full redemption can it be. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Lifted up was He to die. It is finished was His cry. Now in heaven exalted high. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah. What a saviour. What should our response be to the heart of God, the way of God, and to the suffering saviour who is undeniably God? What should our response be on Good Friday 2020? With a world in turmoil, gripped by fear, sickness and death, what should our response be? I believe we can do three things. We can renew our love for God. We can revive our prayer for the world. We can rekindle our care for one another. To renew our love for God is to give no room for idols and false gods. It is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. To revive our prayer for the world is to recognize that God has called us to stand between the living and the dead. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive their sins. I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. To revive our prayer for the world. And finally, our response is to rekindle our care for others. This means to spread peace, not panic. To look at ways to give and not to hoard. To be sensitive towards those with needs and to bless them with words of encouragement and gifts of kindness. 
This Good Friday, in particular with all this happening around us, God strips us from the form of religion in order to deal with our love for Him. He takes away the chattels of life in order to help us focus on the essentials of prayer. He empties us from the pride of possessions in order for us to recognize the gift of family and others. Stripped, taken away, emptied. Now those are familiar themes. Yeah, they are the themes of Isaiah 53. Christ, he had no beauty that we should desire him. Christ, despised and rejected by men. Christ, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. Christ, smitten by God, wounded for our transgressions. Christ, by his stripes, we are healed. Christ, the suffering Savior, the suffering Son. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Let us pray. Father, in this day where we remember how Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, Fill us and renew us with a love for you and a passion for Jesus Christ. And Lord, in this time where the world is in turmoil, where people are suffering, Lord, revive us in our prayers. Heal our land. Forgive our sins. Come and intervene as we humbly pray. And Father, for the people that you have given to us, our families, our loved ones, people that we are spending time with in this season, precious season, Father, give us the grace to relate to one another, to forgive where there are needs for forgiveness, to allow you to heal and reconcile all broken relationships. Help us to be kind and loving to one another. Lord, this Good Friday, fill us with an awe and appreciation of the cross, the cross where Jesus died. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for such a Savior. In Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Friends, let's spend some time personally with God this Good Friday. There will be two points that will be flashed onto your screen to help you ponder and to pray. After a moment, the psalmist and the dance team will be ministering to us, helping us to worship Christ, the suffering Son. So would you take this precious few moments and just Renew your love for Jesus. Amen.
laid aside your majesty and gave up everything for me. Suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. And now today you reign in heaven and earth exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you You are the only one who died for me You gave your life to set me free and So I lift my voice to you In adoration aside your majesty you gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you had created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and perfect to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you. to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. You gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. My voice to you, yes, O mighty cross, love lifted high, the Lord of life raised there to die. His sacrifice on Calvary has made the mighty cross a tree of life to me. O mighty cross, what throne of grace! He knew no sin, yet took my place. His sacrifice on Calvary has made the mighty cross a tree of life to me. O mighty cross, O Christ so pure, love held him there, such shame endured. His sacrifice on Calvary has made the mighty cross a tree of life to me. O mighty cross, my soul's release, the stripes he bore have brought me peace. His sacrifice on Calvary has made the mighty cross a tree of life to me. Let us pray. Most merciful God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have delivered and saved the world. Grant that by faith in Him, 
who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of His victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.